Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Technical Analysis Webinar here with Avatrade. My name is Troy. I'll be presenting. As we get started, as always, let's do a quick systems check. If you would, type OK in the chat box if you're hearing me clearly and seeing my screen all right. Just waiting on a few more responses. Uh, if you would, type OK in the chat box, in the question box, uh, if you're hearing me clearly and seeing my screen all right. Oh, great. Great. Looks like we're up and running fine. If anyone has any issues uh, as we go along, feel free to let me know. Keep in mind that each trade that you take has risk. No one trade is guaranteed to profit. Uh, We've got some nice tools in that regard in the web trader and our mobile app that will assist you with your risk management. We'll make use of some of those uh, tools within our strategies today. Uh, also keep in mind that what we cover is not meant to be financial advisement, but is coming from an educational perspective. Uh, real quick before we get on the live charts, for anyone who's new to things, uh, what is technical analysis? Uh, put simply, it's uh, looking back at the past price movements and trying to find patterns that might help you uh, predict future price movements. Uh, we might be looking for certain patterns uh, that maybe trend in one direction. We might be looking for ranging movements that go up and down uh, in kind of more of a sideways direction. We might be looking at price levels uh, of support or resistance, which we'll go over what that means as, as we use those types of levels. Uh, in one way or another, you're putting together uh, ideas from the past to help you hopefully predict the future with a bit more accuracy. Uh, there, there are manual methods of doing that, which we make use of uh, in my webinars where you, we draw our own lines and such. Uh, you also can put indicators on the chart to help solidify those ideas in your mind. The indicators are basically looking back at the same thing we're looking at uh, and giving you some sort of visual representation uh, as to when to buy or when to sell, which is the same idea with the manual technical analysis that we do as well. Uh, if you have any questions, you want to give any input as we go along, feel free to do so at any time. From our main website, uh, if you haven't used the Avatrade Go mobile app, you can find it under the trading platform section, Avatrade Go, or just keyword search in your app store on your mobile device, and you'll find Avatrade Go for downloading in the major app stores. Uh, the reason I'm showing you is because it has the same functionality and features as our web trader. The advanced technical analysis tools, the advanced fundamental analysis tools uh, from Trading Central, it, it has uh, the advanced risk management tools like Ava Protect and the uh, calculator feature within the order window. So there's a lot uh, that you'll see in the web trader as we do our uh, session today that all of that is also in the mobile app. So to get into the web trader, we log in from the upper right corner of our website. And I may need to refresh. Nope, there we are. Uh, and since we're focused on technical analysis today, those are the tools that, that we'll spend the time uh, utilizing in the web trader. But uh, I always think it's a good idea before you get into your technical analysis to kind of have an idea of what's the sentiment, fundamentally speaking, for the day. So maybe you have a preferred direction in your mind uh, that you would like to find entry points uh, if you think the wind is blowing in a certain direction, so to speak. Uh, with different instruments. Uh, for example, it's earnings season, the bank, uh, the big banks numbers have been coming out, JP Morgan, Bank of America, Comerica, a lot of, a lot of the numbers have been good for the banks, uh, which kind of is expected, right? Because the interest rates have gone up, especially on the US banks. You know, the, the interest rates when they go up tend to create a larger profit margin for banks. So while it, it the, the, the rates are being increased not to help the banks, but uh, to try and bring inflation down. Uh, those higher interest rates eventually can bring nice returns for the banks. Uh, so it, I don't think it's so surprising that some of these banks have done well, uh, even with, with the recessionary fears that have been out there with these rate hikes, uh, because of the relationship of interest rates with uh, bank profits a lot of times. So if you've been paying attention to those earnings numbers recently and the momentum on the markets, 
uh, you see why there's positive momentum today on the markets. Uh, that combined with the fact that uh, in the U.S. largely, but also in other areas today out of the U.K., out of the European Union, uh, the numbers have really started to show that there's a slowdown of this inflation. Uh, data has been coming in worse than expected on uh, CPI data, PPI data the past couple weeks, uh, jobs numbers, etc. cetera. And so uh, the fact that this data is starting to come in worse than expected is increase. You'd think, well, why would that make the markets go up? Uh, it's because that increases people's uh, thinking that, hey, maybe aggressive rate hikes aren't needed anymore. Because you know nobody likes higher interest rates when you're trying to get a business loan, you're trying to get a, a loan to buy a house or to buy a car uh, or to use your credit cards. If interest rates keep going up, it makes everything more expensive uh, to buy because of the high interest rates, which makes you buy less stuff, which brings the prices down, which is the whole point of these higher interest rates uh, to try and bring down inflation. So if it shows inflation is coming down faster than expected now, these latest numbers the past weeks and again today, uh, that actually creates optimism in, in the major indices and on the stock markets around the world because they anticipate maybe less rate hikes because of those bad numbers. Uh, and so it's kind of a bizarro world where bad economic news is actually causing the markets to rise, but that's what's kind of been happening today as well as the past weeks and months. Okay, so that's kind of the backdrop today that uh, fear has kind of dropped some today. Uh, the markets have been going up in terms of stocks and major indices. Uh, maybe some of the commodities are pushing up as, uh, as currencies weaken a bit with less expectation of rate hikes. Okay, you know, if, if you think, wow, it's less likely the U.S. will have lots of rate hikes moving forward, probably you would sell your U.S. dollars and buy stocks. It, it might make sense if that's how you felt. And that's kind of what's going on with a lot of investors maybe around the world. So with that as a backdrop, then we get into our technical analysis saying, OK, I understand the fundamentals a bit right now. What are the maybe the signals coming in from Trading Central, which takes into account the technical analysis? And if those line up with what you feel the fundamental news is, uh, then you line up the technical analysis to fit how you feel the movement should go anyways. And, and you only enter if it's an opportunistic entry point for the direction you prefer. So uh, if you feel there's optimism that, you know, there could be economic demand going up because maybe less right, rate hikes going forward, then maybe you feel like something like crude oil or natural gas should go up. If the, you know, if it's paired against the USD and you think the USD has we reason maybe to not be so strong now uh, from a fundamental perspective. So then you, you pull up crude oil and you say, okay, what's happening today technically. So, and by the way, let's go back. Uh, is there a signal on crude oil? Uh, let's see, there is. This little symbol means there's a live signal from Trading Central. So if I click on that, the signal comes in the order window and lo and behold, it says buy on crude oil. So that fits the fundamental perspective we just did. We just did an overview that told us in our mind, probably the USD is gonna be weak today because of the positive, uh, momentum on the stock market and, and the, the lower likelihood of people fearing multiple rate hikes to come. Uh, and so uh, the economic slowdown in the latest numbers uh, is actually fueling a weakening of the U.S. dollar and, and a rise in uh, equities and commodities. That's how we felt it should be today. And we look and we say, oh, well, that's what the signal says too. Uh, now we can look, it didn't reach the the key levels yet, the recommendation is to take profit at these resistance levels up here on this buy signal. Uh, it almost reached the first signal, but did not. Actually, we're looking at daily candles. So today it did not reach the first level. It was yesterday, and then it pulled back, and the signal is for it to push back up. So the high from yesterday is the first resistance level where they say you might take profit. And then the next resistance level up, we'd have to go to larger uh, to a larger chart view, the next resistance level up is around 76.40, okay? So now we can expand this chart and we can say, okay, we're on one day candles. I can see if I drag one of these lines up, this is today's movement, that's the price level today. Here's the high right here, 77.33 from yesterday before it pulled back. And we can see 
if we go maybe to four hour candles, a little closer view of things. Okay, here's a resistance level here. Okay, around 75.97. Uh, and that, that's near this first uh, 75.80, they're saying they recommend the first take profit. So that makes sense. It's right near uh, this resistance level here. And so the technical analysis I see is it's near the first resistance level. But this signal came out uh, a couple hours back, okay? It's been out for a while. And look, if you go back two hours, it would have been a nice entry point. So uh, it looks like this signal was a good one. It's in the direction of the fundamental news. Uh, and it has already carried up almost to the first take profit suggestion. Now the question is, are you a little late getting in on this? And the answer could be yes. Uh, it, it's already carried almost to that first suggested take profit. Uh, if you feel the momentum will continue past this resistance, then you might still be interested up towards the next resistance level up this way around 77, okay? And they actually show here uh, 77.40, right about there is where they're saying the second suggested take profit is. And if we go back in time further, we may see if we go to like one week candles that that price level is significant somewhere else, okay? And it is back a little further. We see resistance on the one week candles back here. You see this here, it was a spot where there's resistance from the past on the one week candles. And that's why in the near term, they're picking uh, this price level 76.40 uh, as a potential take profit, okay? So I view this in two ways. If you were in on this for a short move, the signal already almost carried out to that first resistance level. It was a good signal, you could have already profited. If you feel like the momentum will continue, then you've got room up to, based on our technical analysis right now, up to 77.30 before it hits that next resistance level past this one down here, okay? So uh, bigger picture, if you think USD will continue to give ground, there's a lot of positive momentum on the stock market right now, which is signs that fear has dissipated. And lately, when fear dissipates, the USD tends to weaken. So no guarantee that'll continue. But, you know, we see a resistance level here on the one-day candles that it's reached. You see this gap up from the past? So this is a price level. If it breaks this price level, then it looks like it's got clear sailing up to this price level here. Okay? Because you'd be entering a gap right here from the past. So there's no resistance between here and here in that gap, except for this spot here, okay? So you actually could say, uh, as we look at, say, one hour candles, it's still an uptrend, and you don't see major resistance until 77. So let's, let's assume you wanted to buy here, based on all of that. And I'm not saying you should, but if you decided you wanted to buy, 77 uh, looks reasonable as a price point, and if, if you wanna get maybe your stop loss down into this gap here from the past, gaps on charts a lot of times serve as support and resistance levels. Whatever caused the price to gap down was bad news. Whatever made it pass back through and above that gap is good fundamental news, which is happening today. So uh, unless that good fundamental news reverses, like all of a sudden the earnings numbers start to come in really bad for the banks, uh, then unless that, that happened and the positive momentum is reversed, it, this, this price would probably have trouble dropping back below this gap. So if you get your stop loss down into this gap, you're protected by today's good news, by the, the, the positive earnings numbers, and that would have to be reversed most likely to hit your stop loss, okay? So that's the idea of understanding why these price points got passed by, what caused the momentum, and then that's why getting your stop loss back into those, below those price levels in this case might make sense, okay? So if I'm gonna put a stop loss, I probably wanna put it into one of these prices that it makes sense that it would take major momentum then to hit my stop loss. So that's at about 75, 74.99. So 75 sounds good to me. Okay, so $2 down to my stop loss. It's a, I'm, I'm risking about half what my potential profit is, a little more than half. 
And it, this is what I mean by how the web trader and our app help you with your risk management. It's calculating your potential profit, your potential loss. Now, I don't want to risk 4,800, maybe. Maybe I want to risk 500 instead of almost 5,000. So I need to take, instead of six and a half lots, I need to take 0 0.65 then, right? So 0 0.65, I'm risking about 474 to make 832. If I want to risk 500, I'm making up a number. You could be whatever number it is that's right for your balance and your risk tolerance. But we do the risk management here, okay? So now I'm changing my trade size until I see, okay, it's about 500 risk to go after almost 900 profit. So now I take my trade, okay? And so I did a combination of looking at the signal from Trading Central. The momentum's in that direction. It's almost to the first key level that they predicted. So it shows that they were onto something with that signal coming out of Trading Central. I look at the fundamental news before I even looked at the signal and I already thought that that's the direction it might go, right? So now I'm, on, I'm doing my checklist. I'm checking the fundamentals and getting an idea of which way do I think it'll go. And, and that should be for yourself, right? You shouldn't trade in the direction I think it'll go. You should trade in the direction fundamentally that you think it should go. Then maybe you check the signals to see if they agree. Then you check the entry point to see if you like the entry point. And if all of those align, then maybe you make the move. Uh, Simon, I, I see your question. Let me read it. Ah, okay, good question. So Simon's asking, uh, the movement is just below that first key level that was recommended in the signal. And let me bring the signal back up. Simon's talking about this first key level. And he's, at, he's saying, you would, he's asking, would I still enter? And uh, the answer is, I, I don't answer for anyone else, right? For me, I feel like the momentum might continue. And if I felt that way, then I would still enter because uh, this, in my mind, is confirmation that that direction was correct. And unless the fundamental news changes in the next 12 hours, I think there's a likelihood that this could push up towards the next key level. If I thought that the momentum was about to end, that, okay, that's it. Momentum's fizzled out. It's not big enough news today. The momentum's not strong enough. Then I might think it won't break this resistance level. And if I thought that, then no, I probably wouldn't make a move to buy. So, and it isn't for me to make up your mind. So just because I'm simulating in this strategy that, that I'm buying and having a target of the second key level, and I even went higher because when I did my technical analysis, I saw 77 as a price level I thought it might reach, okay? Uh, but just because that's how I felt, it doesn't mean you should feel that way. But I'm demonstrating that if you get the fundamental news in a spot where you think you can have a feel for the direction you think it might go. Then if you like the entry point, when you do your technical analysis, then maybe you make the move, okay? Good question. Simon, that's another good question. He's asking, would you wait until it breaks through to confirm the uptrend still? And, and, and I would say that's not a bad idea at all. So you might put a pending order just above this key level, okay? So that if it breaks through, now it confirms further uptrend, and then you have you take profit up towards or past that second key level. That, that, that would be waiting for a confirmatory breakthrough. Uh, that might increase uh, in your mind, your confidence in the move, but then it, it puts you at a worse entry point as well. But, but you also get the confirmation before you enter. So there's a cost to that, a higher entry point on a buy, but it, in your mind, if that confirms the uptrend better, then that's a strategy many traders use. And I myself use that strategy in many of the webinars. So, and by the way, you don't have to pick one or the other. You could do like I did and buy now, assuming you wanted to buy, right? I know I keep talking about buying. If you wanna sell, you can sell. But I'm saying if in your mind you wanted to buy, you don't have to do one or the other, meaning you could do a market move now for half of the amount you want to take a shot at uh, profits with and put a pending order above the resistance 
for the other half of your trade so that you're diversifying your entry strategy okay and then yeah you might put your stop loss back below this level so i did a market move so uh my stop loss is somewhere below one of these resistance levels support levels then if you had a pending order up here and it kicked in then you might have your stop loss back below that level for that pending order okay how do you do a pending order very simple let's do that let's let's assume the trade i took my market buy is the first half that I'm willing to risk. And then now I want to do a pending order buy. So I would say execute when price hits. And I would say if it goes above that first key level, let's say above right here. So let me draw my line. If it goes above this level right here, if it breaks past that next key level. So if it hits 76.2, then maybe that confirms in my mind an uptrend and I want to take another buy. If it reverses and drops, I only lose the first market move. If it breaks through and, and the first one's already in profit and it breaks this resistance above that first key level, then I buy again, diversifying my entry point, only adding more to the trade if it confirms a further uptrend. Okay, that's a strategy. It's a confirmatory strategy. You get a worse entry point, but you're waiting to add more to the trade only if it confirms the uptrend in this strategy. So uh, execute when price hits, should say if price hits, right? There's no guarantee it'll get up there, but I'm gonna say 76.2 or whatever price in your mind confirms enough momentum that you think it'll keep climbing, okay? That's the idea of the strategy. So I'm going to buy, but only if the price hits 76.2, then my take profit could still be up at 77, okay? Uh, and my stop loss then could be just below this broken, if it breaks through this resistance and it's a true momentous move, then I only need my stop loss back below that someplace. And if it hits that, then it's a small loss, right? Or you could have your stop loss further down, that's up to you. But let's say I would put my stop loss back down here at 75 and a half. Okay, 75.5. Okay, entering at 76.2, so I'm risking a little less than my potential profit. You see, it's not, you, you know, the market move, we were, the potential profit was almost double the risk. Now the potential profit is almost even with the risk, a little better, because the pending order is getting in at a little higher price, okay? But, but then if that confirms in your mind more an uptrend, that's the idea of making a move like this. So pending order, uh, I don't want to risk 45.50, right? So the amount I want to risk, I'm going to put the right trade size. Let's say 0 0.7, no, not 7, 0 0.7. And that's risking 490, about 500 to make 560, okay? That will only enter if it breaks through the resistance. So now I've diversified my entry point in a, both in the direction that, that maybe I believe the fundamental news says it should go. And I used the technical analysis to determine my entry points and exit points, okay? One entry was a market move because it's currently uptrending when we did the technical analysis, showing momentum right now. The other is an entry point only if it breaks the next resistance level, confirming an even stronger uptrend in your mind, okay? That's the idea of that strategy diversifying your entry point into two different spots. And thank you, Simon, for those suggestions. Yeah, Simon, uh, other ideas would be hedging, uh, but let, let's, let's save that for another conversation. Hedging would be trading in the opposite direction at some point, if you so in fact choose to do that. But you know that also makes it so that you're not profiting if you're fully hedged. Okay, if I take a trade in the opposite direction of the same size of my exposures that I'm buying with, if I then sell at some point, uh, then it eliminates my ability to profit until I unhedge. So hedging is when you're unsure of things many times. Uh, right now, you're placing your initial trades because hopefully you're somewhat sure of what direction you think it might go. Okay, all right. So. If we look then, we see we have one active trade, 
okay? That's just getting going. The PL is on zero. So we, we've overcome the spread, uh, but it, it's just getting moving. And the other trade has not triggered yet. It might, but it has not triggered yet. Uh, so this is how we're, uh, in general, using fundamental news and then technical analysis uh, together to kind of formulate a strategy. Now, what else can we use within the platform for help with technical analysis? Uh, we can we can take a look at the forex featured ideas. Okay, this gives an in-depth analysis of of technical strategies that may or may not be for everybody. Okay, uh, it really gives uh, an intricate breakdown of technical strategies. It gives you the the, the idea behind it over here. You get whether it's bullish, uh, bearish uh, signals, and what was found with the indicators. You, they could be talking about RSI. Here it's talking about the MACD indicator. So if you're really into indicators and technical analysis that gets uh, more in depth, uh, this is a great tool to use, to come in here and take a look at what's going on with the predicted movements, you really get a breakdown of different candlestick formations and different signals coming from uh, the different indicators. So that's also a nice tool uh, for those of you that like to do in-depth technical analysis as well. Now, uh, let's take a look maybe at some other signals. And now we can do some anticipor anticipatory uh, trading as well. There are large announcements coming out of Great Britain tomorrow and out of the European Union. Uh, so the fact that there's CPI data, okay, Consumer Pricing Index, which is a major, major gauge of where's inflation right now, uh, coming out of the UK tomorrow and coming out of the European Union. So really big announcements that will uh, determine people's feelings about inflation in those areas and also whether it will fuel fears of rate hikes to come in the UK and EU, which could strengthen the pound and the euro, or whether if the inflationary data comes in lower than expected, it, it could cause the, the, the pound and the, and the euro uh, maybe to not be so strong. So it depends how that data comes in, right? So let's take a look at some pairings with the euro and the pound and also the pound. And, they, and I'm not saying necessarily against each other, but against other currencies. So if we do Euro JPY, for example, we can take a look at uh, how they set up technically. And what I see on the one hour candles is it's ranging. What do I mean by ranging? Going up, back down, going up, back down, as if the market is waiting for something, okay? you see. Since this spot on Friday last week, we see it hits resistance, comes back down, hits support. It hits the same resistance, comes back down, hits the same report. Goes back up, hits resistance, and now here it is trying to push back down. So we're ranging between these two prices, okay? What you could think about leading into the big data release tomorrow, okay, is that if there's enough momentum, you could have a pending order up here to buy. If it breaks through the resistance, you could buy. If it comes back down and hits your stop loss, then you can try it again. Put your pending order up here. If it breaks through, buy. Eventually, the movement will, and this is guaranteed, right? Eventually, the movement will either break up or break down. Now, it might fail a few times, but eventually, it will make a movement that continues uh, further, either below this mark or above this mark. And perhaps it'll be a more uh, rapid movement because of tomorrow's CPI data coming out of Europe, the European Union and coming out of Great Britain, okay? This is what the hope is with a breakout strategy is that because there's big news coming, that the technical breakout strategy could more likely work where if it breaks through, it might have enough momentum just to keep going. Now, you can play this a couple different ways. Because those announcements haven't come yet, 
you could be selling from the resistance and buying from the support, meaning you could be trading the ranging strategy. When it came down here, you could have bought. When it came up here, you could have sold. When it came down here, you could have bought. They have pending orders here to buy and here to sell because the big news didn't come yet. Now, the closer we get to the big announcements tomorrow, maybe you wait to put the pending orders on the breakout strategy. The closer we get to those big announcements, you could start to think about if it's still ranging, then to have pending orders above the ranging price and below the ranging price, that if it hits here, you sell, and if it hits here, you buy, okay? And so in that case, you just put two pending orders. You put a pending order here to buy, a pending order down here to sell at those prices. The sell would have the stop loss back up here, and the buy would have the stop loss back down here. Your take profits could be up at where you ever see, where, wherever you believe the next significant resistance would be, which maybe is right here. You see this resistance here. So if you buy from this price, your take profit could be here, which then if this is your entry price, your take profit's about two and a half times what you're risking to your stop loss back down. And the same on the bottom side, if it breaks through, your take profit could be here at this support level here, where it hit and went up in the past, your take profits about double what you're risking back to your stop loss. Okay, so uh, that's a breakout strategy that you could set up now if you want with pending orders, or you could wait until we get a little closer to those announcements tomorrow to see if it's still ranging, then set it up. Because until those announcements come, you could have fake breakthroughs and then pullbacks, a fake breakthrough and a pullback, which could cause you to lose a couple times on this strategy. Once you get closer to the big news, and if the news comes in significantly different than expected, you really could have a breakthrough that continues one direction or the other. So this type of breakout strategy many times works best if it's nearer to the big announcement that's come. Okay, and, and obviously it works best if that news is significantly different than what's expected. Then you have the potential for a larger breakthrough and run. Okay, so I see potential in a strategy like this because of the big announcements tomorrow uh, to, to, to break out of these ranging patterns that are occurring on the Euro JPY and some other pairings. Now, if we look at the GBP JPY, one hour candles, it looks almost like the same thing, doesn't it? So uh, resistance here. Support down here, it's ranging between the support, back up, resistance, back down. Support, back up, resistance, back down. Support, back up, resistance, back down. So uh, ranging strategy, and, and, and the point is knowing that the big data this week for the UK and for the European Union wasn't coming until Wednesday, until tomorrow, you could have been trading the ranging pattern all week. You could have been buying from the support and selling from the resistance each time it went down and back up, and you'd have had huge wins. Uh, ranging patterns tend to continue when there's no big news, and there wasn't big news Monday, Tuesday, for the European Union and the UK. Now the CPI data comes out tomorrow. Eventually, you'd expect then it will break out of the ranging pattern. So the technical strategy Monday and Tuesday maybe should have been trading on the ranging movement, now the technical strategy that might work with the big news coming tomorrow, if it comes in significantly higher than expected or lower than expected on the CPI data, could be the breakout strategy with pending orders to buy if it breaks out of the resistance or to sell if it breaks below the support. Okay, with a short stop loss back up, short stop loss back down, and larger potential profit to the next resistance level up or larger potential profit to the next support level down, okay? So with a strategy like this, you only need to win 50% of the time and you're in a nice profit. Even 40% of the time and you're in a nice profit because your potential profit's about two to three times what you're risking back up. And with a strategy like this, you're always trading in the direction of the momentum, of the breakthrough of, a, of a, what you deem to be an important price level, okay?
Uh, okay, good question. Boris, you're asking, where do we find the announcements? How do we know there's such big news tomorrow uh, out of the UK and out of the EU? So go here to Discovery, click on the economic calendar. And by the way, in my Thursday session, we go over how to use the economic calendar because there are advanced tools on our economic calendar that show you how big has the movement been for these announcements if it comes in higher than expected or lower than expected. You can actually see, were there breakthrough movements? Were there big movements with these numbers? Uh, right here on the economic calendar, you can see that. So uh, if we look at tomorrow, tomorrow is the 19th. So let's click on the 19th for the date on the calendar. I'm gonna double click because I don't want the 18th. Let's only have the 19th showing, there we go. Okay, so uh, here we go, inflation rate. It's the CPI data. So uh, inflation rate, uh, high level announcement, expected to drop from 8.7 to 8.3. Wow, is that high inflation, right? I mean, it's expected to drop, but 8.3% inflation rate, that's huge still year over year. Uh, month over month, it's expected to be almost cut in half from 0 0.7 to 0 0.4. So it's just real quick since, since we're here. Uh, you can click on here. This is an advanced tool that's not on most economic calendars. You can say, okay, with the GBP USD or, if the, or with the GBP JPY, whatever currency pairing you want, pick the time period after the announcement. We'll go four hours. If it comes in higher than expected, how much movement? 113 pip range movement on average uh, if it comes in above forecast. If it comes in below forecast, 86% or I mean 86 pip or so range movement if it comes in below forecast, okay? You can see if it comes in as expected, what happens? 182 pip movement. So uh, you can get an idea of how far will it move and the percent of the time, the direction that it moves after the announcement comes in. And you might look and say, you know what? Maybe the movement is more significant on GBP USD instead of GBP JPY. Okay, I can say if it comes in below forecast, it went 66 pips. If it comes in above forecast, it moved uh, 83 pips, and look, it's two-thirds of the time it went down if this came in above forecast, okay? So you can get an idea of directionality as well as how far, how much of a range of movement was there after the prior announcements that came in a certain way, okay? But, but to answer your question less in depth, uh, you've got the inflation rate listed in the importance column. See, it says importance as high importance. I'm not so interested in the low importance announcements. You get more movement, more volatility, more momentum on the chart if it's listed as high importance, okay? Uh, and I can go down and, and look uh, for the European Union, here's the inflation rate, year over year, month over month, okay? Same thing. They've, they've got this listed as medium, that's better than low, low uh, importance, it's still listed as medium importance, uh, coming out of the European Union, okay? So uh, pick your spots, check the data. You can see which movements cause, which announcements cause bigger movements in the past and only trade the ones that you think show the most momentum with their announcements, okay? If, if this announcement shows a larger movement than, than the other, maybe you focus on this one. So four hours after the event, if it's above forecast, only 32 pip movement. It's listed as a medium level announcement. So it makes sense, the movement is less. 32 pips, not 180 pips. So you can see the difference maybe between the medium level announcement and the high level marked announcement. It doesn't always work that cut and dry, but look at them, you'll see the data, okay? I, we, we, I got a little bit further into that than maybe I should in a technical analysis webinar, but again, this could be part of your checklist to say, I'm looking at the technical signal. I'm looking at my own technical analysis. I'm drawing my own price level lines like we did, but then I'm also going to look at the economic announcements and how much it caused movements in the past. If I'm doing a breakout strategy based on those announcements, then I'm probably going to look at 
what we just looked at on the economic calendar as well to pick the ones that have the biggest breakthrough moves from the past announcements. So then I'm combining the fundamental economic calendar with my breakout technical strategy and only doing a breakout strategy around the announcements that in the past the economic calendar shows the biggest moves. Okay. All right, everybody. I, I think this is a good place to stop. I want to thank you all for the very good questions. Uh, we, but we're 40 minutes in. I know most people start to lose the att attention span after about 45 minutes. I'll give a chance for any last questions before we end things or comments. All right, great. I don't see any questions popping up. Uh, at least not yet. So uh, thank you all for joining. Thank you for the participation with sharing ideas and asking questions. It's really helpful uh, for everybody else listening because they might be thinking the same thing, but they don't quite know how to ask it. Uh, so very nice. I think it was a good session. Uh, everybody, good luck with your trading tonight and going into tomorrow with the big announcements. And there are some, some big announcements on Thursday as well coming out of the U.S. Uh, with housing data. So uh, we'll talk about that on Thursday, maybe in Thursday's session, which is uh, 11 a.m. UK time. All right, everybody, till then, good luck with the trading.